Okay, let's try an example from section 18.3. Um, this one looks uh, very familiar, I suspect. Um, what we've got is a wall, um, a pulley, a string connected out to the wall and coming down over this way and attached to some mass M. Um, this distance here, um, the wall to the center of the pulley, that will be four meters. Um, down here, that's uh, an additional meter. So that the total length of the string is going to be five meters long. Um, and we've got values for all of these other things. And so, and what we want to do is we want to find out what the fundamental frequency of vibration of this um, string here is. This looks very much like what you did last week for the standing waves. i just like to remind you about it. Um, so let's take a peek. So what sort of stuff do we have here to play with? Okay. So what we've been given in the problem is a string, okay, of total length of um, L is equal to 5 meters, a mass of um, little m is equal to 8 grams. Um, let's see, what else do we have? I think that's all we really need for the string itself. Um, and it's been um, stretched from wall to pulley. Stretched from wall to pulley. So from here to here. Um, and that distance is, I will call it D is equal to four meters. Um, and and on top of that, it's had a weight. So it's been weighted down at the end. And that that weight is, or that mass, the mass of that weight is big M is equal to four kilograms. Okay. Um, so that was our ID. This is our representation. Um, our concept will be the um, standing waves on a string. All right. And our equation, our main equation for that is going to be um, V is equal to lambda F1. And the reason why I choose this as the main equation is because I want to find the frequency. As you recall, I didn't write it over here. Find the um, fundamental frequency. F1, and that's going to be associated with the wavelength lambda 1. Okay, so um, let's see. I think the way to approach this is lambda here we know, right? Lambda is going to be twice this for the first fundamental frequency. Um, for the first one, let me pull this down for a second. The first fundamental frequency, um, we have some wave that will go from here to here, and obviously this is a standing wave, so it's going to be oscillating up and down as well. So, you know, don't forget that node, anti-node, um, node again. And then, but that's not enough for a full wavelength, right? A full wavelength has to go 
uh, one full, it has to go a full wavelength. It has to go up, down, and back up to zero, right? So zero, one, two. Um, one antinode, two antinode. The loop is going to include both of those things. So this is sort of the imaginary wave that has this real part of the wave included. Um, so we know what this lambda 1 is, right? So one, we know that lambda 1 is going to be equal to 2 times d, this distance from here to here. So, so we're okay with that. We can, we can, we can re represent this as um, one of these quantities times a number, so that's no big deal. Um, but how about this guy? How do we relate this to these quantities? Well, remember from um, chapter 16, uh, the velocity is the ratio of um, some sort of force divided by some sort of um, some sort of inertial property, in this case, the um, linear mass density of the string, okay? So now we can use this as well to um, relate um, the V to these things. Um, and that's because uh, to A, uh, the linear mass density is equal to the um, total mass divided by the le total length of the string. So the um, total mass of the string divided by the total length of the string, um, just like you did in lab. And so that gets rid of this guy. This guy, we, we still need um, the tension. The tension in the string all comes from this mass here. The only thing this mass has, if we draw a free body diagram really quickly, it's got the weight here and the tension here, right? So we've got a weight and a tension. Um, they cancel, cancel each other out. So the tension is going to have to be equal to the weight. And we already know what the weight is. That's just the mass of the block times the acceleration due to gravity. So now there's actually nothing left. We've got everything we need. We can put that all together. So let's put it all together. So V is equal to lambda 1 times F1, which is equal to 2DF, all right, 1. And that's also equal to the square root of t over mu, which is equal to the square root of um, m times g over little m divided by l. OK. That looks funny, so I'll just keep on going. Uh, we have mgl. Uh, divided by little m is our last thing. So we've got this is equal to this, and that'll let us find this, because we know this guy, this guy, we know that guy, we know that guy, we know that guy. We know everything here except for this f1, which is the thing that we want to find. Um, we're doing pretty good. So um, just rewrite that. f1 is equal to... Um, Oops, okay, F1 is equal to 1 over 2D, 1 over 2D um, times the square root of all this fun stuff, MGL over M, okay, so that means we have 1 over um, 2 times 4 meters times the square root of big M is four kilograms times G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times this big L guy, which is um, five meters, divided by the little m over there, which is eight grams. So that's eight kilograms divided by 1,000. Uh, okay. 
so how are we doing um kilograms and kilograms cancel um meters squared second squared those come out so we have one eighth times the square root of um 1,000 um, times um, 5, so let's 5,000 over 2, because that cancels. 5,000 over 2 times 9.8. And from all that other fun stuff that I was talking about earlier, we have no meters. We have a meter, meters squared under the radical, so that brings one meter out. We already have one, one over um, meters out here, so we'll cancel that out. All we have is one over second squared under the radical, so we bring that out. That's one hertz there, so we're doing okay. Um, and now we can plug that into a calculator or something like that. Um, the 9.8 means I don't get to play around with the numbers anymore. And that is, let's see, um, I believe 19.6 hertz. Okay. All right, oops. All right, so as a check, um, the only thing I'll look at for the check here is, you know, the units of, um, frequency are equal to t to the minus one. That's what we have. So we're okay. All right. Thank you very much.